and I met in, uh, in college, and we started decorating our dorm rooms with things that we'd find at, uh, at flea markets. Uh, and then in uh, my junior year, I began working for a gentleman who uh, was disassembling barns and salvaging materials, building materials. We sort of graduated from buying these bottles, these uh, one, and five, and two dollar bottles at flea markets, uh, and started attending bottle shows and seeing better and better things, and eventually became uh, dealers as we were trying to improve the quality of the objects that we were able to keep. When we were in college and shortly thereafter, I don't think our friends really thought anything of it at all. They, um, they had other interests in their lives. Uh, they thought it was curious some of the time that we were spending running around to, uh, to auctions and flea markets and shows. And we just, we loved the objects so much and I think eventually they kind of began to understand what they meant to us and I think in turn, uh, you know, they were able to see how they too could appreciate antiques and, and, and what it can bring to somebody. And as they started settling into houses and their lives, they started asking us more and more questions about how they could furnish their homes or pieces that they could be looking for where they could find quality, unique objects. Yeah, it was a, it was a gradual evolution from, really, I guess, in effect, from them thinking we were crazy to them finally figuring out that we were making a living and now for them thinking, hey, that's pretty cool stuff. I'd like to have some of it in my house so that I could have uh, something that's, that's a little bit different from what I see in every other home. The, uh, you know, the advent of eBay uh, you know, has, has really uh, influenced the manner in which people uh, search for antiques. Uh, the internet in general uh, makes it uh, there's so much information that's out there. There used to be that there were a lot of sort of uh, insider secrets, um, and you'd really have to push and probe to find out information. Where now the information's right at your fingertips, so it really has leveled the playing ground uh, or the playing field. Uh, it's also taken geography out of the equation in that you can be great friends and collectors with someone you've never met in person, and you can be talking to somebody about an object and send them a picture and be looking at the object simultaneously. If, if you see things that move you, buy them. Um, you know, the, uh, I think people really get fixated on value at times, um, and the value only matters when you buy something and when you sell it, and in between then, it's your appreciation of it. Uh, and we can't, none of us can predict the future. We don't know what's gonna be hot, what's not. As long as you love the things, you're gonna get enjoyment out of them, and they all retain value, uh, which is very different from the things that you buy you know, the cookie cutter shops where the moment you bring them out, it's worthless. You know, you, you, you buy a, uh, a piece of furniture at some of these big box stores and no matter what you pay for it, once you put it in the car, it has no value. But these things still have an intrinsic value to them uh, no matter what. So it's always important to buy what you really love and care for. That, that's another important thing to say about antiques is that they were always made to be used and looked at and appreciated and that's what we should do. They're not necessarily something that you can't touch, can't look at. It's something that you can live with and that's, uh, that's important.